Hello, everyone. How you all doing? Again, this is Calvin Butler with the RBBS Logistics Learning Center and the National Dispatchers Network. Tonight is Tuesday night, 8 p.m., so it's usually our how-to broker training. Now, tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a, we're going to do a, um, a recap or a review of what you all went over last night. I did watch the playback. And you all had a lot of questions, you know, and some things that you all were talking about. And I wanted to go over those and kind of, you know, kind of touch base on the things that you all discussed last night. So if any of you all had any lingering questions or anything that um, you wanted to ask tonight, it's going to be the night to do it if uh, we're talking about the auto hall and things like that. I'm going to also going to go ahead and do my review. Of, of the broadcast last night and kind of recap some stuff and just kind of reiterate some stuff on top of that. So with that being said, let us get started. All right, so Darren Stevens, also known as Damien Stevens, all those aliases he has, uh, <laughs> conducted um, his first um, self-training session, um, the student self-training session. As you all know, what we are going to be doing now, let me start sharing my screen here real quick. What we are going to be doing from here on out is you all see here where it says how to how to um, dispatch training. That is going to be replaced on every Monday night from 8 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. or until whenever y'all get off, because I think y'all was on this almost 11 o'clock last night. Y'all didn't know when they come, know when they shut it down. <laughs> so I guess y'all were having a good time. But every Monday night, it's going to be um, student self-training, okay? Uh, students helping each other via Zoom. And that's going to be the title. It's going to be, you know, student self-training session, student helping each other via Zoom. So that's going to be the title, and that's going to be every Monday night from, um, from here on out. And each, each, each Monday, we're going to have a different student host, okay? So give y'all the opportunity to get used to, you know, being on the mic, conducting um, your webinars and things of that nature. And it's a good way for you all to learn from each other. So we're going to be doing those. And there you all see is our placement holder there for that type of training. It's called self-training sessions, students helping students via Zoom. Okay. And last night it was auto hauling with host Darren Stevens. First of all, Let's give him a round of applause. He did very well. Um, um, as you all know, Darren um, is become kind of a the go-to guy to you know when it comes to auto hauling. Um, he took to our um, strategy very well, and he just kind of ran with it like a fish, you know, like a fish in water. And uh, he's doing very well. Uh, I don't know is Darren on his night here. Is he on here tonight? I don't think so. Not yet. He's not on here yet. But um, I know that for a fact. I think you say he's gotten his um, his revenue up to around almost ten grand a week now um, with the auto hauling, or somewhere somewhere between six and ten grand per week. Um, he, he has to verify that, but I believe that's what he said. Um, I believe that's what he told me um, on yesterday. So he is doing extremely well. We also got some apps here. Um, Beauty says, hello um, to everyone. I am new and watched Monday. My question is, when joining UShip, do you sign in as a carrier? Yes, you do. You got to sign in as a carrier, and you do not need an MC number or a VOC number because that is optional. So. To answer your question, yes, you will sign in as a carrier. Now, beauty, we like to hear you all I'll post your questions. So if you don't mind, if you have a question, just come on and say, I got a question, <laughs> okay? Because we want the world to hear it. We want everyone to benefit from the answer and benefit from the questions, okay? So um, that's how we like to do things. But if you look shy, you don't want to talk, I understand. But we like participation, okay? Um, Back to what I was saying about Mr. Stevens, um, he is doing extremely well. Um, he took to our platform like a fish out of, like a fish in water, uh, especially 
on the auto hall side. Now, that's just what he's doing on the auto hall side. So he's also making some some gains in revenue um, doing the regular dispatching as well. Now, you all had a lot of questions last night. Some, some of them you all got the answers to. I can think that's true. Some of them you all did not. So what I am going to do is I'm going to do a um, a recap or a review and kind of see if I can answer some of the blank spots or some of the eh, kind of questionable spots that you all had. Um, I know one of the questions um, from last night was, um, is what she asked. You know, do you have to, how do you sign up with Uship? Okay. Uh, and, and, and where do you sign up? You got to sign up as a carrier slash broker. Okay. Um, um, and the reason why that is because it does not work as a carrier, I'm sorry, as a carrier because it does not require you to have an MC number. Okay. Matter of fact, let me show you all here. Once you go into U ship, everybody can see my screen, right? So once you go, in, go into U ship, when you go to sign up, you're going to go over here where it says join. I'm going to click the join button. And then you're going to sign up. Oh, I'm trying to pop my neck. That felt good. Um, you're going to sign up right here. And you're going to sign up as a as a, um, as a carrier. Okay? Not as a shipper. If you are a broker already now, you are a broker. You have um, your bond and all that type of stuff. And you're going to sign up as a broker. But you're going to sign up right here because you notice here when it asks for DOT number, it says optional and MC number. Optional, which means you do not have to place one there, so you don't need one. All right? And you'll be able to sign up. Okay? So um, that solves that question. Another question um, that, um, and you all help, help me out with some of the questions you all had that maybe it didn't get complete answers to. Another question last night was asked um, about um, the pitch. And you all want to know, um, could we do a program where we actually call up the carriers and pitch them live? Well, we've been there done that. <laughs> OK? Uh, if you want to see a live carrier pitch to actual carriers, not someone who we're, we're having to, to, to play a role, I mean, us actually calling up Finding a carrier, calling them up, showing y'all how we found them, the whole nine yards, and that's making the dialing to the carrier and then pitching that carrier. Um, you can find that in the video library, okay? And it's gonna be under the video called The Perfect Pitch, okay? And I'll show that to y'all right now. It's gonna be under the video called The Perfect Pitch. Um, how many of you remember that, that training session? Has anyone ever seen that? Has anyone ever seen it? Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. So for those of you that haven't seen it, you're going to go to your video library, which we are going to now. It's over here. Um, and you're going to search under, uh, it's not in the how-to series. That's not where that is, okay? The how-to series does have a pitch in it, but it's, it, it, but it's not a live pitch. It's one where we were doing role-playing, okay? I think what you all were asking last night is you wanted to see an actual live pitch, okay? Um, what browser at all? Browser running really good. Well, it has a tendency to, I don't know why it does. Let me go over here. Um, but the, um, it just loads up stuff really, really slow. I don't know why it does that. Uh, I'm gonna use both browsers. Let's get it to work right. All right, so it's not gonna be in the how to dispatch series. We do have one in here called the pitch, okay, which is right here. But that is a us role playing. That's someone who's part of the group who's actually role playing as a carrot. If you want to see a live pitch, if you want to see a live pitch, 
you're gonna go to the um uh, you're gonna go to the um uh, up, up right over here and you're gonna scroll over and you're gonna search for it's gonna be in the weekly no 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 I take it back it's gonna be an operational training session I think that's what yeah it's gonna be under operational training okay and you are looking for the title the perfect pitch and when you see it, you would know it. Uh, I'm scroll over. But we're shooting. And we got a couple of them in here that has live pitches. But we like to show you this one because the guy was being really, really, really difficult. <laughs> I mean, he was, I mean, he was downright, you know, you know, I don't want no dispatch. I don't play no blousy, blousy, dispatch. You know, I, 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 I don't need them, you know, that type of thing. Now, I dispatch myself, you know. My wife dispatches for me, and I don't pay her a dime, you know, that type of stuff. So, so uh, if you want to see us overcome a lot of, if you want to see us o overcome a lot of objections, go and find this video. It's called The Perfect Pitch, okay? And that's the one where we actually do a live pitch a live on an operator um and, and and it has all the stuff you're looking for as far as um how to overcome how to overcome objections and just how to stick with it because at the end of all that after you put up all that big fuss all the you know the, i don't need this i don't want that i think you all are worthless and all that stuff you wind up signing up okay and uh this is it coming up right now. You'll see it here in just a moment. We got a lot of videos in here. If y'all didn't know that. A lot of videos. There it is. Well, uh, that's one of Sister Dispatch. Make sure y'all go back and watch those too. There's another one on the auto hauler. Make sure y'all watch that too. You gotta go back a ways to find that perfect pitch. And I know you all asked about it. There it is right there. All right. It's the one that says um good salespeople versus great ones. Okay. And it has the different income models. Good salespeople they usually make around twenty five to forty thousand dollars a year. Great salespeople make up with two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay. And this is the pitch. That you all are looking for, you all are looking for this video, okay? When it says the perfect pitch, now if I had to click on it uh, for, for you all. Now that one actually includes us calling an actual live carrier. We show you how we found the carrier. We um, actually called them up. Matter of fact, we called up a few of them. Some were either asleep or didn't pick up the phone. And we finally got one on the line, and he was not happy at all. But guess what? He wound up signing up. He put up every fight, every Objection you can think of cursing, you know, dispatches are worthless. You know, I don't need no dispatcher. I find my own load. My wife dispatches for me and I don't pay her a dime. Why do I need you all? I mean, everything. And we overcame every objection. And when it was all said and done, it was like, oh, shoot, I might need this. Let's go to sign up. Who can I you know what I gotta do to sign up? And he signed up. Okay. So if you're looking to see that pitch in action, there it is right there in live time. All right. That's the video you're gonna look for. Okay? Hey Calvin. Yeah. Uh I was gonna say I had an idea for like a student training to where like maybe we can do something where people T tell me or like one of the other students like all the objections that they've heard and then we work with each other on how to overcome those yeah i mean y'all can conduct student training on, on your student so like student people. Yeah, yeah. On, your, on, on your student helping student uh, training you can conduct just whatever you want to okay mm -hmm. that's that's you know just whatever you all yeah. you know, want to conduct just just shoot me something something and let me know when you want to do it and you know what your idea is, and then we'll get it scheduled in. Uh, we want to kind of, okay. uh, we want to kind of spread it around and give everybody a chance to host. Okay, 
Um, we want we, we want as many as you all right. to get used to hosting as possible because we're coming up on our um, new division here real soon, uh, May first. Okay, uh, we're gonna start training on it next month in April. So you no, know, I'm finishing up the website now, and come April, you know, around April the fifth or somewhere around there, we're gonna begin training on that um um on that new platform. Um, you know, um, and training you all as consultants, and we're gonna, and I want to have at least twenty of you all in place um, to do that. Okay, so May first, we're gonna go ahead and launch it, and have you all start contacting these first year brokers, and I want you all to have some, lack of a better word, some screen time or trigger time. You know, um, hosting the webinar, so you all to kind of get over those jitters, because the last thing we want is for you all to. You know to call up a you know um to, to contract you know, these young brokers and then you go in and you're freezing up <laughs> you know you get and you get a stage fright we don't want that okay so uh we want to get everybody a chance to get behind the mic as possible all right but yeah just shoot me something through facebook or whatever the case may be and just let me know what you know uh, what it is you want to do one on and then we'll get the schedule in okay But um, okay. all right, great. But this is the um, the video that you all can watch the live pitch. Okay, and this is not you know this is not one where where, where, where we're role playing. This is is an actual live pitch. Um, you know, and it, as you see right here, this is uh, six figures booking free from home show. How to win over a hostile prospect. Warning: This video contains a live unscripted sales pitch. With a 30 year veteran owner operator, your discretion is advised. This could get ugly. Because he did use a lot of explicit language <laughs> in his attempt not to be dispatched by a professional dispatcher, but we want him over. Okay. So uh, that's when you want to watch. Okay. All right. Um, what are some of the other questions you all had last night? You all had, you all had a lot of questions last night. Um, a lot of things you all were going over. Um, you know, um, I'm just trying to go off the top of my head, trying to remember some of the things that you all posed, some of the things that I, mean, I noticed you all didn't get a complete answer to, but, and I like to kind of go over those things and um, help you all to get a better understanding of, 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 of what's going on. Uh, now, um, I don't know, is Darren on here tonight? He's probably not on here tonight. He's probably busy um, making uh, beers. <laughs> oh, here's another. Uh, yeah, here's one. Matter of fact, there's, there's, there's Darren right there. Just, just logging in. Um, one of the other questions you all asked last night is you all made the point on the mission that it seemed like Darren was on every beer. Okay. And I guess you all were alluding to the, uh, the concern that. Because we're so, we've been so successful at training people on this strategy, is that going to saturate the market on you ship? That was the question. Um, no, because like anything else, here's the deal. You go to any car dealership, you got 15 to 20 car salesmen, right? They're all selling the same product. They all have access to the same type of office all the tools the same products the same training everything but there's always two three four sales people that are always at the top of the leaderboard and there's always very sales people who are at the bottom of the leaderboard now with that being said remember this is sales that's all this is okay there are more than enough customers to go around for, uh, for everyone okay you ship has I mean, it's just a constant barrage of people having vehicles that, that need to be shipped. These people don't just run out of vehicles because there's always something that's going to, that's going on in society, that's going on with business, that's going on with education, that's going on with the military, that's going on with buying new homes and moving, that's going on with the forces, that's going on with you know student kids moving out of the house and trying to get their car moved to a different place. There's always something going on that's going to Require that a vehicle needs to be shipped somewhere. Okay, always, always. 
is a huge market. Okay, so I wouldn't worry so much about since Darren is good at it or such and such is great at it. Is he going to outbid me? Well, he could, but you could outbid him. You just got to become great at what you do, just like he's good at what he does. If that was the case, Darren wouldn't be, he wouldn't be doing so successful. He's not the first person we've trained, and he won't be the last. There are other people on there who are following that same exact training, but he tends to win out more often than not, right? Why? Because he just made himself better at it. Now, do they win out sometimes? Yes, because they bid on stuff that they've already gotten and, and is off the market before Darren gets to it. And the same thing will happen with you. Because there's always going to be a market for that arena. And I wouldn't worry so much about what the competition is, because if you, if you did that, you wouldn't be better. You might as well just stay at home and just sit on your couch and just watch soap opera, be bonbons, but like married with children. Have fun to see his hand in the just sit back and, uh, right? So don't worry so much about that. They gotta get in the game, okay? Um, yes, Latoya. Latoya, you raise your hand. You got a question? Latoya, you know. Oh, I'm question? sorry, I, I hit my phone. No, I don't have a question. Okay. No, I don't have a question. <laughs> I hit my phone by mistake. Okay, so you don't have a question. All right. All right. You know, you know um, Zoom has this little thing, you know, when you raise your hand, it pops up over here like somebody raising their hand. So I thought she had a question, but obviously she, you know, she didn't. All right. So, so but um, to answer that question, uh, Darren, you're on here, right? Yeah, I just logged on. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> they asked a question last night, you know, uh, because we're training so many people and our training has been so successful, is the market saturated? <clears throat> that was the question. And I wanted to reiterate that in no way, shape, or form is the market going to be saturated or is it, or, or it, it's never going to be saturated because there's always some type of circumstance, business, personal, through a marriage, through military move or uh, school or whatever. It's always going to be, this. I mean, there's a million and one reasons why people need the cars okay and there's a million one people that's always on there <coughs> trying to get the cars moved so so you're never going to be able to get all the business for yourself okay that's, that's not going to happen okay so, so there's always going to be business yeah, because if that was the case then you would be successful right hello right um i actually just sent a car to a military base <coughs> Just did what? I, I just sent a car to uh to a military base two days ago. Ah, ooh. all right. So, 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 so you're still quote unquote trucking right along. By the way, um, what's your revenue up to now? On the auto hauling. <laughs> um. My contract for this week was was what now again? On my contracts total for this week mm -hmm. weekend, and I, I haven't checked what I really pay my. Okay, but some reason it keeps cutting out myself yet. But you know, when you say the amount, <laughs> not on purpose. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it on purpose. No, I'm saying um, for for this week, um, in total with my with all my contracts, this is over ten thousand. Okay, over, over ten thousand. Okay, that's what I thought you said um, when I told everyone um, earlier. For this week, you've gone over ten thousand. So, look, if if and and don't let that number scare you all into thinking that well, he's got all the business. Oh, because there's, cause there's hundreds of millions of dollars of business on the, on the platform. <laughs> he, he doesn't have all the business. There's about $100 million worth of business on the platform. Okay, So there's plenty of business for everyone. Uh, you just got to take steps to go out there and get involved and get your part of it. 
Now, um, that helped me out. What were some of the other points that you all were asking about that you all needed a clearer or a more definitive um, explanation or an answer to? Anybody have any, any lingering questions that you didn't get um, solved from last night? I have a question, Calvin. Sure. Um, I talked to a carrier that wants to do power only, and mm -hmm. I was just wondering where can we find him low? On low boards. Um, you, um, you just have to look under the, you don't have to just um, put, put in your filters. That's what you're looking for. And let me give you an example here. You're gonna have to put in the filters that that's what you're looking for. No second here. And is there like a certain load board to look these up? Want to filter? No, nah, just about all the load boards we have a power on fix. Um, all of your major ones. Okay. Uh, look at some of those smaller load boards. And I have it because a okay. lot of follow there, there, um, they have a a, a, a specific uh, distinction. They are either all flat beds or all reefers or or all vans or something of that nature. But if you're looking at how many of the uh, major okay. load boards that we use, say for instance, if you go to what's this? If you go to, um, let's just say, Trucker's Path, okay, and you want to look for just power only loads, you can do just that. Uh, go to Trucker's Path, go to the link. Okay. Truck loads for carriers, because you want to look for loads. The trucks, you're gonna go truck loads for brokers. Um, you're gonna go search online. You know, back and log me in on here. Let's have reset it. Let's come back. Okay, so I'm log in. Come on. Um, when you go look for equipment, you know, look down here, and you know, people where it says power. And then you know, okay. find loads. And then it will search and only put up loads that are listed as power only. Right there, so here. And old. And you got quite a few. Uh, you can go show fit the board, show fit the board, show fit the board, and so on and so on. Okay. Now, if you want to, I'm out here. Yeah. If you want to engage this right here. Save. Go. Loads. Power only. You do look at the full truck loads. I could put a partial and full to give us a more of a parameter. Um, don't see anything that's paying the 2.5 mile on here right now. I was paying 20, so let me do this. Let me adjust this. 
from now. This one's paying 220. Lafayette, Indiana to Worcester, Ohio, uh, power only. Paying $650. It's going 295 miles. Um, get some information on that. Yeah, it's a five a.m. Always keep paying. We'll look at the number. I think what it says, show phone number. Microphone lost. Just show the phone number as soon as you click. Ah, we see a confirmation email. Gotta go check my email now. We said off this email. There it is. I'm right there. Look at the number. Oh. But that's how you find your power on. Now, depending on what low boards you're on, um, some some will have that as a um as an option. Some will not. Most of the ones that 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 you know the major low boards that we give you access to, you know, they're, they're basically going to have it. That was two twenty. Another one, twenty six thousand pounds, three sixty nine. It's only going what? How many miles is this? One hundred and three miles. And it's paying seven fifty. Um, you got some pretty good. Um, okay. Power only. And, and the other ones that's probably going to give you um, the power only. Here's quite a few of them down here, um, as you can see. And then you've got the other low board that gives a lot of power only. Okay. It, it's going to be direct freight. Um, and some other ones on there too. A lot of next load of power only here as well. Okay. Just kind of go through low board and make sure you hit the option and you get power only. All right. Any more yeah, questions? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say something about that. Um, also, those um, power only load that for $100, a lot of times what they do, you can keep the trailer for seven to 10 days. And oh, yeah. you can put your own load on it and return the trailer to yeah. whatever destination they want. Yeah, because they don't necessarily require that you return the trailer right away. Now, um, Don't see one way trailers. Yeah, that's company. Um, so yeah, you can keep the trailers for a while and then you return them at the end of the week. So you can keep those trailers for money and make some money. Okay. And that's all um that's the FDL. And I can go in here and put in, you know, um any size, it will give us probably more more freight to look at. But we're just doing that for the FTL. We'll cut those. Okay. So if we do it this way, it should give us more trucks. More loads to look at. All right. Anybody else? All right. Um, you have a question? I had a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a question. Um, what do you think about trying to use U ship for straight trucks? Like, do you think it's a way that we can make that work? <laughs> All right. I'll be honest with y'all. I'm not a big fan of straight trucks, box trucks. Spinner vans or hot shots. I I don't waste right. my time with it. But look, here, here's the thing. <laughs> Y'all gotta remember, 
this is business, okay? And the name of the game is what? What's the name of the game? The name of the game, the name of the game is to find carriers that you can find. Yeah, that's back to high probability. You know, in this business, time is a killer, right? Time is your biggest enemy, right? So you need to be filling your book of business with the carriers that has the highest probability of putting loads on them. I know that there's a lot of box trucks out there. I know there's a lot of hot shots out there. I know there's a lot of Sprinter fans and you know people out there that, that and they want freight. And but unfortunately, you cannot help everyone. And because your business is predicated on you booking as many loads as possible, because you need because you're only charging ten percent. Now, I, now this would be something different. If you was getting half of the low fee, or if you had your own, you know, group, own carrier group, and you were, you know, getting, you know, a good big chunk of the low fee. You understand what I'm saying? But, but you're not. You've got to make, you've got to make as many loads as possible. You got to make repeat loads, and those repeat loads is where you're gonna make your money at, right? You got to repeatedly keep putting loads on those. Bands on those flatbeds on in those reefers, you know, to keep them going. And right now, the abundance of loads is where auto haulers, reefers, dry vans, and what flatbeds, right? Right? Right. Okay. Right. So, you know. You know. I talk a lot about, you know, staying focused. It's just not, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's just not worth it. I, I mean, if someone could come up with, yeah. uh, if someone okay. could, if someone could, could come up with, come up with a load board that just pulls together all the hot shot loads and, and you got a load board that's just dedicated just to that and it had enough freight to satisfy all their little, their idiosyncrasy, their, 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 their their idiosyncrasies, I think I said that right, because <laughs> they got, they have all these issues. Okay? I mean, let's just face it, they have a lot of issues. They're like the, they're like right. the bipolars of the, the trucking industry. <laughs> right? I don't want this. For real. I, I have I a box truck guy there. that, yeah, yeah, he literally gets mad at me. Yeah, I mean, I don't want this. I don't want to go there. I, he literally I don't gets want to mad because I tell him I can't find anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, no. But that's not the business you're in. And then he get mad because I don't call him. So it's kind of like, what you say? It's, it's not worth the time. <laughs> I'm, yeah. just being, I'm just being, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm trying to be rude to yeah. those who have chosen that, that, um, that part of the industry, but they chose that part of the industry, and unfortunately, there's 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 not enough business to keep them completely running all the time with them trying to be so pick and choose. Okay, now, right? Have you, you had you somebody who would run just about anything, anywhere, anytime? Then yeah, it might. And notice, I said it might be worth. Because even then, it gets kind of difficult because you don't always have freight that's available um, for them. Not like a drive-in or a, a reefer flatbed. Right. You, know, you can always find those or those um, those types, and that's the business you're in. Okay. Um, I don't know what to tell you. Um, if, if 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 time was not. Your no, enemy. it's okay. I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, but uh, that's for the general public. If time was not your your enemy, yeah, you could you know go yeah. knock on you know these mom and pop shops and go meet them you know you know firsthand and work out a deal. So they just run the stuff back and forth all the time. Yeah, that would be great, but uh, that's not feasible. That's not practical. Okay. 
Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because see, there's a reason why we went pray for three hundred. Because okay. I have um, I signed up this box truck. Yeah. See, I just don't. I don't do them. I'm sorry. I know they'll tell you, well, I can do this. I can do. That. Uh, you can, but not with me. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I just don't. Yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna get in the habit of doing that. Yeah. And you just have to just stick. You, you, you have to stick to. Yeah. 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 You gotta stay focused. Whoa, 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 whoa! Who has all that noise? Where's all that background feedback coming from? All right, but um, but yeah, just stay focused. Stay focused on and, and concentrate on what makes you money. Okay, um, that's and it, 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 and I'm gonna say something else, and then we're gonna move on. Um, losing your focus is one of the biggest killers of the dispatch um, companies, okay? Because um, it's easy, it is, it is very easy to get distracted and walk on and walk on and walk on these rescue projects and you find yourself needing rescue, um, need to be rescued yourself, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? Um, you can't save every drowning person because sometimes they'll drown you Right. Right. All right. Yep. They focus on the business that's out there, and and this way, way, way too much business to be trying to, you know, you know, handle these these, these specialty projects. Okay. Um, and no, right. and, and and nothing against you, hotshot drivers and spinner van drivers and box trucks, but you know, hey, that's a that's a niche. Type of industry, so you all need to find you a niche provider, and uh, right, and that's not that's not the independent um, dispatch. Okay, all right. Any more questions from from last night? Get mm -hmm. other questions. No, but I did want to say, like tonight. Mm -hmm. It seems like you're you're like breaking up like really bad. I don't, I don't know, know why that is. Um, I can hear you all. Yeah. And I've got all my bars of field on my internet access. I've got great, you know, um, I'm indication on my internet access. It says it's all filled up. Yep. All, you know, my screen okay. is connected. I don't. Everything is. Filled up. I don't. I don't know why it is. I don't have that many screens open, or as what I what I normally have open. It may be the fact that I'm sharing on a whole bunch of um different um groups, and I might need to start not sharing on so many, you know, and then and then just uh, go back and then uh, post on them because. We are sharing on about nine different groups. Right? Okay, yeah. Somebody said, you said I'm not sharing. Did you say I have bad connection? Somebody said that. Yeah, they said that I have. I guess no. they thought I had a bad connection. Uh, Calvin, I'm not hearing you properly. Are well, you not seeing me properly? Or hearing me properly? Not hearing you properly. Hmm. Yeah, you're breaking right. up. Is everyone, that, is everyone having that same problem? Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know what it is. Because yeah, my system, there's a, a little delay. <laughs> okay, because so my system says that I'm I'm fully up. Hold on here. But a little delay. You're going off and on. There's the... There's there's a delay when you're speaking. Hold on. Yes. Let me try something. Let me try something. Nothing there. I know we're live in some places, but we don't have the we don't have the volume turned up. I don't know why that is because my my internet shows all bands. I mean, it's I mean, it's 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 lit up all bands. So I don't so I don't know why that that delay is. 
Uh, I just have to something I have to work on um, after the show. I can't figure out on what it is right now. We only have we don't have a whole bunch of people on here tonight, so I don't know. Maybe maybe more people are sharing you know, our stuff over and over again. That sometimes does it, but I don't doubt that would cause my voice to be coming in and out. And I'm right up at my mic, so you should be hearing me clearly. Well, I don't know why, but but we'll try to go ahead and um, finish doing what we're doing, and then um, I have to contact the internet provider on tomorrow. What's going on? Okay. And I have to see how the playback sounds, so we'll 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 see how that is. All right. Um. Any other questions? Any other question? Okay. All right. Let's do this. How many brokers we have on here tonight? We have any brokers on here on here tonight? No brokers? Okay. Yeah, I think you got all dispatchers. <laughs> okay, no brokers right here tonight. All right, all right. So let's continue on with some dispatching stuff. Now, um, I am going to be adding a new um, feature to the back office. Okay, it's, it is. It's, it's going to have to do with the the private consultations, right? Um, I'm getting ready to start adding some people to do consults. As you all know, Deja has already expressed an interest in um, being added to the private consults. Um, I have got a couple of people that have expressed interest. If you are interested in being a private um, consult, Shoot me an email at right here, training at drbbsllc.org. Okay, shoot that email. And then what's going to happen is we're going to add you all here. We're going to click on it and to um, book a private consultation. You all will be added. Like right now, I just have a link, as y'all can see that, and y'all can see right there. So in the future, you all will have we, you have more options here, and we're also going to list what their expertise is, so you can get an idea of what they are, you know, um, advanced in and what areas that they have exceptional knowledge in, in areas that can help you. Okay, so um, because I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm swamped when it comes to consultations. I mean, we got a lot of people that. That book, you no know, uh, consultation, and they're not members. And we get some members who are booking consultations. So, um, you need some help. And I only do consultations on Wednesdays, on uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. No Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday um, consultations. Okay, so that do. But with uh, building the new site, um, working with Ali on the uh, the new old board, which we are very close to releasing that here very soon. The new old board. Okay, I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm gonna make a point to uh, get in touch with the lead on tomorrow or the day after. Day after uh, tomorrow, preferred because because we don't have class on Thursday. So I'm gonna try to get in touch with him sometime on Thursday and Friday, and we're gonna have a long discussion on where we are with the low board and let's see what we end up going right away. All right, the other um, section I'm going to be adding to the low board is going to be um, it's going to be an opportunity section. Okay, as y'all know, we talked about different companies that you can uh, sign on with affiliateships to within the industry, right? And you all can market their services, and they will and they'll pay you. Okay, like the um, the CNTMS, that's one. The other ones are going to be various uh, vacuum companies. Also, we're going to have some 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 finance companies that do the business lines of credit. 
So we're going to be putting a lot of stuff up on that page. And it's going to be your opportunity um, page where you ought to go in, review those companies. You can sign up with them and start marketing their services just by putting your links out, or whatever the case may be, and, and do a page. And that, could, and that could add up to some residual income. Okay? In case y'all didn't know. Okay? But those of you who didn't know. Does everybody know what I'm talking about when we talk about the affiliate shit? Signing on as an affiliate marketer for these companies. Does everybody know what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Some of these companies pay very, very, very good money. Like if you sign up with one of these um, finance companies <laughs> and you refer someone and they, let's say, they and they go in and get a, a $200,000 line of credit, right? And then they go out and they purchase, they purchase a truck that's $140,000. <laughs> or they get a business loan that's a certain amount and, and they're paying back $1,200 a month. You could be getting anywhere from 10 to 20% of that every single month. So that could be 120 to what? $240 a month, right? Every single month. And the more you add on to it, the more it grows and grows and grows and grows. Well, same thing with these factoring companies. Sign someone up and they get a factoring company and they're factoring a whole bunch of loads. You're getting your percentage of each one of those loads. That they you get a percentage of the money that the factoring company is making uh, from them. Okay? So, uh, and the CNTMS, same thing. Sign someone up for the CNTMS every month for payment. CNTMS is sending you a check. So, you call it SMTMS? Yeah, it's called a CNTMS. Um, I'll, I'll be posting all the, um, the affiliate links up in the back office um, probably sometime before Saturday, or I will get it done this weekend. It's going to be a new page. It's going to be called the RPBS um, LLC um, 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 Partnership Opportunity Page. So you know, different, different companies that we have reached out to and they've offered to partner um, with with you all and 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 let you all um, be affiliate members and you have to join that stuff and start marketing their their um, their services on your social media pages, mm -hmm. your websites or whatever. And you all would be paid for each person that clicks on it and then signs up with them and so you their services. Okay. So we're gonna be adding that. <clears throat> um, we're, 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 we're trying to get to the point to where we are offering a whole lot more opportunity. Okay, other than just learning how to book freight, uh, we realize that, that 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 this industry has a huge capacity for opportunities. And, and there's a lot of things that you all are gonna be looking at. We also have some people who are in development, who are developing some very, 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 very game-changing software. And game-changing, I had a conversation um, with a gentleman, and I'm not gonna spill the beans, because it is, you know, he is coming up, he is putting together a, a, a group of people, and they're gonna do some things that is really gonna be a paradigm shift for the industry. It's, it's literally that big, and it's gonna just, Take the industry, and you all are going to be very, very pleased with it. Okay, um, that's all I can say right now. That's all I can say about that right now. So, um, <clears throat> if you all have any type of ideas or anything like that, feel free to get to book a private consultation, and we'll help you any way we can to help you develop that and get that to, to get that to production. Okay, um, but. When it does come out, they have, he has he has agreed to let our network use it first. So we'll be the first, and we'll be the first network to um, you all will be the first ones to actually use this product, um, use this type of software, and it it is a uh, crazy game changer. Okay, <laughs> so uh, just be ready for it, um, and hopefully. Um, they'll get that to us. A um, uh, quick um, question about it: Does it pertain to the dispatchers or brokers? Um, I can't tell you much about it because you know, you know, it's 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 one of those things where you know we were to talk about it, 
um, before we talk about it, we have to sign a non disclosure, non compete. Okay? But it is huge. That's uh, all I can say. It's chill. And it, it, it is going to be a paradigm shift in the industry. Okay? It's not very often that a paradigm shift happens within the industry, but this is a paradigm shift. Okay? So just be ready for it. Okay? And it's going to be huge. All right. Um, any other questions? Not. Now, look, this is not going to be a long session like you all had last night. You all was on this thing until about 11 o'clock last night. <laughs> uh, my wife, uh, uh, we, we were listening. Uh, we had it running, but we, we could listen to you all. And, uh, and my wife made, made notes and said, well, they just going, well, they just going in. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> which, which is great. Uh, which is great. This is why we're making this a a, uh, a part of our curriculum because I think it's great that you all are able to, to go in and, and 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 talk so fluently about what you all are doing, okay? especially those of you who are seeming to, to excel in certain um, areas and you're willing to share um, your tips and your advice to those who are having a little bit of trouble or those who are just starting out or those who are still trying to find their way. That is encouraging, okay? Because that's that's what the platform was built for, and I, and I just want to let y'all know that I appreciate it, and you all are doing a great job at helping each other out and fulfilling, you know, what this platform was meant to be. Okay, um, we've been getting a lot of we've been getting a lot of great feedback. Um, I don't know if y'all watch our YouTube channel. But we got we get so much great feedback on YouTube. It is not funny, um, you know. And you know the proof is in the is in the pudding. So um, I want y'all to keep doing what you're doing. But we get a lot of great feedback from our YouTube channel. Um, I see what y'all mean because because my computer does seem to be running slow, even though it's got the full setup here. This seems to be running slow. Um, yeah, look at some of the notifications here. We look at some of the notifications here when it pulls up. up, 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 up. Uh, here's one says, amazing video. You deserve more views. This is from the video from last night, um, Darren, um, by the way. So uh, your you all's views are coming up more and more on this video. I think, I think right now, uh, What's the views on this? But that's from the um, comment that was highlighted from last night. Um, you know, amazing video. You deserve more views. Okay. Um, here's one from Asia's um, debut. Uh, okay, I'm a whole bunch over here. Uh, what do you? Uh, someone wanted to know. Um, from the one that Deja did, when are you gonna do this again? Um, you know, they loved it. Um, you know, and they all seem to be, seem to be um, positive reviews. Um, replied to our BBS Solutions Luncheon. Uh, thank you. Um, another one. Um, someone said, will you please send me a link to the email so that I can get started? Uh, so I, I can start your class. I think we did go ahead and send them a link. Um, you know, a lot of great stuff. You know, people are really, 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 you know, um, you know just, just, just a lot, a lot of great stuff. So people are really catching on. People like what we're doing. Um, we are, we, we are, we are making a lot of noise within the industry. Um, so just keep doing what you're doing. And and um you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Okay, because um, if you if you just stick with it, it before you know it, you, you just start, you know, get the rolling and and and, 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 it, and the next thing you know, you know, you look back and say, wow, I got this many carries, got that many carries. But the one thing I that I do want to stress to all of you is stay focused. You gotta stay focused because there were times when I first started, um, back when I was living in that um, that storage unit, 
and trying to build this platform and you know building my clientele um back when we started out as brokers um i almost got distracted and and, and this is why i warn you all to the you know, you know about the, the distraction thing because if you get distracted you can find yourself you know just going way off track and then you start feeling like well you know I, i'm missing something i'm missing something I, i'm missing something and then, you, and then, then the next thing you know, you say, "Well, you know, I don't want to keep putting time into this because it's not paying off for me." That's because you got distracted. Okay, you, you've got to stay focused. There's not, there's not a whole lot that you need to do to make great money within this industry, in this fashion. You really, there is really not a whole lot that you have to do. Because remember, what are the steps? And and it, it just. It, just stick to the basic steps. I promise you, it, it, if you stick to the basic steps, you can't help but be successful. It's the, the stuff outside that causes you to get off track, okay? Like trying to deal with hot shots and you know, all the other stuff. If you stick to the basic steps, okay? If, and what is that, okay? I gotta call up, I gotta find a carrier. So you go to the site where you find the carriers at, you just start battling, start calling up carriers. Make sure you learn the script. Because you're going to pitch them the script. Hey, Mr. Carry, how you doing? My name is Cal. I'm with RBBS, you know, um, Dispatch, RBBS Transport. I'm LLC. We are members of the National Dispatchers Network, a network of more than 4,000 members, all freight brokers, dispatchers, owner operators. All working together to find carriers like you, high dollar freight. Let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to build your truck? Stick to the basics. Okay, when they, if they raise an objection, you overcome it. Stick to the basics. Once you've overcome it, then you repeat with what? How does that sound to you? Right? You go back, you go, go right back to the clothes. They come up with an objection. Okay. I understand. I see what you're saying. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you a question. That's your transition phrase. Transition back to what? Repitching them and reiterating and overcoming the what? The objection. Right? And then once you've done that, you go back to what? The clothes again. How does that sound to you? <laughs> right? You go back to the clothes. So it, and, and, and that's all it is. And once you get them to the point where they're saying, okay, well, shoot, wait a minute, then shoot uh, a dispatch meeting. Or I'll give, give you guys a shot. Then you do what? You just go back to the steps. What's next? Send them the dispatch agreement and the profile sheet. Let them know what the profile sheet is. So when they get it, they're going to be looking at it like, what's this? Right? Let them know the profile sheet is what they fill out. So you know exactly what they want, the places I'm letting run, and the amount of money that they need. So all you got to do when you call them up is pretty much just ask them, where are you at? Wait for that. Right? And then you just do what? You go find them what they want. Now, if you're good at what you do, you're going to convert them from running these long loads all over the place and just, you know, running like pirates. Right? you gotta, you got to help centralize them and put them in a certain parameter in the area and then you're going to even home it down to even more which you're going to help them what you're going to find them short interconnecting interconnecting loads and once you find that you're going to call each one of those brokers back and you're going to turn those short interconnecting loads into what dedicated runs that way, now once you've done that, you no longer have to find that carrier loads anymore. Y'all see what's going on now? You can go back and concentrate on what? Doing the same thing with every other carrier and bringing in more carriers. Because now you just not only have you freed up some time, but you've set something on the automated scale. It is it's automatic now. Because he knows what loads he's gonna run every single day to the same place. All the time, he's gonna end back up at the same place every night or every end of driving shift. So he has some normal 
remnants, you know, of a life. Because what, what a lot of these guys are looking for, they're looking for something that 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 makes them feel like they're not no man. Okay? Because, you know, now now you have some of these guys that like the idea of traveling all over the country. But the majority of them really want to, they're just doing that because that's what they got to do to get to the point where they got enough experience and then they can come home and do local. Right? Does anybody, does anybody disagree with that assessment? No. Okay. So, by helping them to create some type of, of normalcy and get them off of that nomadic you know, binge that they're on, and you're putting them into a central um, area, you're doing them and you a huge favor. Right? Because now they're automatic. All you got to do is just make sure that those, those runs stay good by checking with the broker every now and then. A lot of you have asked me in the past, how do you get 317 carriers? How do you manage that? Well, we manage that because 70% of them are on dedicated runs. Now, did we go out and, and just get dedicated freight companies? No, no, no. We had to create those dedicated runs. We had to create, you know, about, uh, about 80% of them we had to create. Okay? But when you create one, then that takes what? That frees up this amount of time. You create another one, you free it up even more time. You create another one, you free it up, in the, you free it up, free it up even, even more time. And as you free up time, you find a way to use that time to do what? Continue to build your network, right? Build your carrier network. Because you freed up time. And you got money that's coming in automatically. Nothing feels better than having money that's coming in automatically. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Nothing feels better than that. Okay? So once you put them on those dedicated runs, you set them up on, you know, and you let them know, so look, since you're on a dedicated run now, right, you know where you're going to be picking up at, you know where you're going to be popping off at every single day. You got three loads you're running every single day. On Fridays, you're done. So since you're on, since, since I have automated your money, what's my next, what's my next question, y'all? What's my next statement? Can anybody tell what my next statement is? Anybody? Say the first part. If you're talking to your carrier and you have automated them, right? You put them, you set them up on, on three interconnecting loads that they pick up and run every single day, five days a week. Right? So you pretty much have you have automated their revenue, right? Right. So if you have a conversation with them. Mr. Kerry, since I have automated your 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 money, right, and giving you a normal, you know, kind of a normal life within this industry, now it's time to do what? Upgrade those payments. No, I'm just kidding. Well, no, it's time for it's time for them to automate your money. Right? So you don't have to keep sending them an invoice. <laughs> right? Yeah, because your money is coming to you. Exactly. That money is, is yeah, coming. Me. It's steady. You know exactly how much it's going to be every single week. It's not going to change, right? Right. So now, right. You, right. So now you can have them to do what? Save their card on the invoicing you know, on your square. Right for the auto pay, right? Mm -hmm. That's the perfect time. Right. That is the perfect right. time to approach them about clicking that save my card for auto pay. Because you automated them, it's time for them to automate you. Make sense? Wait, but how do you? What What are the details about the those those weekly inter? Which one call it? How to? Loads. It, it, it's a lot of loads. All right. Let me go over this with you all real quick. That's in one of our video trainings. I'm going to need to see that. 
how to automate I want to say that stack in the deck is a yeah it's called how to automate your business. Strong strategy strategy too yeah now it's called how to automate your business in your um in your um video library okay oh uh, go to your video library look for the the, 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 the video that says automate your business okay now um, and we also have one in the video library called um, dedicated okay but here's what you're gonna do if you're doing dedicated um, here's what you want to do I'm gonna go to my favorite little board and this is as a dispatcher right or a broker uh, this is a dispatcher because or dispatcher. Now you can do this. I mean, you can do it as a broker um, if you, you know, if you got enough loads that are interconnected. But as a broker, you know, you're not using other people's loads. <laughs> and you, 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 get, you, get, you gotta have your own loads, right? So, as a, this works better for right. dispatchers, okay? Um, but let me show you what we're talking about. All right. And the how I picked up on this is when I was an owner operator. When I when I first became an owner operator with Western Express, and uh, I want to give a shout out to all those guys um, at, at 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 Western because their base just got demolished during the tornado. Okay, someone said I, I was speaking with someone um, with Western and said that yeah that their home base in Nashville. Just took a direct hit, so um, they kind of in right. So, you know, want to give a shout. Um, okay. All right, all right. What do we mean by um, um the automated loads? Okay, we're gonna go to the load. Now, when I was running for Western Express, when I first started running, and I told them, you know, don't give me the loads, I'm going to buy my own loads, whatever it's going to be. Like most owner operators, I was running all over the country. I was running from, from Maine down to California, from California down to Florida, from Florida back up to Washington, and all points in between, from Texas to Nevada to North Dakota. I mean, just all over the place. Right? I'm just I'm, I'm just grabbing loads and just running, 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 cause 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 you're like a nomad. You know, I crisscrossed the country about three times, <laughs> you know, in every state, you know, before I finally I uh, figured out and 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 it, and it kind of hit me by happens um chance. I came home. I was I had, I had been out for about six weeks. I was tired. Finally got back down to Florida. Right. I took a week off. I'm just gonna take a week off. Seven days. I'm not going back out for seven days. Right? Now I'm, I'm at home. I'm chilling. I'm resting. A friend of mine who works at the Coca-Cola bottling plant calls me up. No, he was a broker at the Coca-Cola. Yeah. Uh, a, a broker with Warner. Yeah. It, it was a Warner broker. He called me up. It's Calvin. Don't you live in Tallahassee? I go, yeah, man. I'm home now. You know, but I'm taking about a week off. He said, man, you want to do me a favor? Get some quick money for you. I said, man, I ain't trying to drive. He said, no, man, seriously, this is a quick run. It's, you know, they have a 39 miles and pays 350 bucks. I said, okay. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Let's do that. He said, yeah, uh, you know, the Coca-Cola bottom pad right there. You got to have some on Commonwealth um, Boulevard. I said, yeah, I know what that is. That's not far from me. He said, well, you pick it up at about 4, at about 4.45 in the morning. And it's a load of bottle of water and coke product. And you're gonna run it up to Live Oak. I said, Yeah, Live Oak is only about 30 miles out. He said, Yeah. I said, okay. He said, pay um three fifty. He goes, Yeah. I said, okay, cool. So about the next morning. <laughs> you know, the Coca Cola bottom um uh, uh Coca Cola plant backed up. They loaded me in like didn't even take that long. Took me up, took me like a half hour, maybe forty minutes. The load, okay. Five fifteen, five twenty. I'm out of there, right? Headed to Lago. 
39 miles or it took about an hour. It actually took me about 45 minutes. Okay. So this is a straight shot. Okay. Went on the live oak, back in there. Went in about six, six, six twenty. You know, back then, got unloaded. I was getting ready to leave and dead head back to back to Alaska. Right? That made me 300, 350 bucks, right? And the guy, um, the shipping manager came out and said, Hey, right. uh, he said, uh, you mind running a load for me down to uh, down to a lateral? You no, know, it's only 79 miles. They pay you 600 and 80 bucks. I said, yeah, 680 bucks. <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, um, where I got to pick up? You know, you pick up right here. You pick up right here. You just, you no. Know, matter of fact, just back your truck up over here, to number 17, and we just loaded up right now. It's all bottled water. I said, okay. <laughs> so he loaded me up. <laughs> and on down to a lateral. 79 miles, right? Took me about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes. Rolled into a latch, backed up, unloaded, right? And now I'm 104 miles from where? From Tallahassee. I don't necessarily want to dead here that far. So I so I asked the shipping manager, y'all got any loads heading down towards um, Tallahassee? He goes, uh, nah, we don't, but the there's Coca-Cola bottle plant right down the road about two miles. <laughs> I said, oh, really? He said, yeah. I'm sure they got some loads that's going to tell us. I go, I'm sure they do too, because there's a cocoa bottle that can tell us. Yep. So I coasted down the road two miles. And sure enough, there it was. Cocoa bottle plant. When in that ship man, hey, you know, I didn't get back to Tallahassee. I just dropped the load off up the road there. At, at the at, at the bottom water plant. He goes, yeah, he said, yeah, I know it. I said, um, got a loads going to Tallahassee. He goes, Yeah, we have loads. I'll be right here every day going to Tallahassee. You know, I said, okay. Um, how much is it paying? 860 bucks for 104 miles. I said, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> Loaded me up. The Coca Cola problem, Gatorade, the Coca Cola problem, all that stuff. <laughs> and I ran on back to Tallahassee. That was in one day of running, I made almost 1,800 bucks. So then it dawned on me. Yeah. Let me tell you, I live here. I love the red that is dedicated every single day. So I called a water guy and said, hey, I have that load every day? About the same time, pick it up at 445. Yeah, I'm glad to put you on it. Bam. And guess who else I called? Guy in where? Live on. Hey, can I have that load every day? I pick up every morning about between 6.30 and 7.30. Yeah, we had that run. <laughs> then I called the guy on the Hey, can I have that run every day? I'll pick up every day about two, you know, two fifteen, between two fifteen and three thirty. Okay, sure. And that was my dedicated. I ran that for about a year. Never left, never left Florida. Home every night, off every weekend, making almost three hundred bucks a day. This y'all wonder that's almost nine grand a week, man. No more running long hauls. Just running short loads. Finishing up at a decent time, being home in my own bed, showering at night. Going out, doing things that normal people do. Off every weekend. And great money. So when I started brokering and when I switched to a dispatch, I, I started to employ that same a strategy because just about every state you can find runs like that. It's like, I don't care where it is, especially here in Florida. Now, people will talk a lot about Florida. They say, I don't want to go to Florida. I don't want to go to Florida. Why? Well, I get down to Florida, I get stuck, I can't get out. Why would you ever want to leave? If I can bring you to Florida and put you on dedicators, if you run, if you make it anywhere between $1,200 and $1,900 a day, almost $2,000 a day, five days a week. Can't afford to get you a place in Florida and fly home on the weekend, right? If you're running all over the country anyway, you're not getting home every weekend away, right? So why not just run in one state, right? And shut down at the end of night in the same spot, and then on the weekend just catch you a uh, catch you a flight back to Washington or Maine. Or California. 
right? Or Minnesota. Y'all see my point? You you are creating some type of normality for these people who are just tired of being no man. Right? And you're automating their pay annuals. Now look, if I was going to Texas, 3,794 loans in Texas. Now, if you got someone that lives in, let's say, Arizona, on 329 loads there, or New Mexico, on 202 loads there, right? Now, Texas is not that far away from there, right? So why not have them to do some dedicators in Texas to run for a week, they're off on the weekend and then shoot back over here on go home. They shoot back here on Monday. And, right? Y'all see what I'm saying? Or if, you got some, or if you got someone who likes being in Atlanta, right? So you're similar to Georgia where there's 4,042 loads. Oh, they can rent those loads and have them run on loads, you know, run on loads and be back in Atlanta. They can get them a little nice little party pad right there in Atlanta. <laughs> they can go home every weekend you know, if they want to. This is how you become. I got a question on that. Yeah. So when we're pitching our drivers, is that something that we should mention? Because I've told drivers, like, I can help them, you know, find their own dedicated freight or, you know, help them find their own customers. But when I say that, then that's all they want. Is what, dedicated freight? They don't want me to, like, dispatch them. They just want me. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's what you're trying to find for. But look, here's, here, 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 here is what you're gonna do. Let's uh, let's look in Georgia. Okay. All right, let's take Georgia. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go Georgia. Because I actually just had a conversation with a guy about this exact thing, and he was let's, telling me like, let's do a flatbed. And I was telling him that he can do this. And he was like, well, that's not going to make me no money and blah, blah, uh, blah, and stuff like well, that. Well, let's test that theory. Let's test that theory, right? Let's test that theory. All right? So right. You're in Georgia. You're going to flatbed. Sit here. You're going to flatbed. He's okay, what let's... kind of... Hold on. Let me... If you got set there on straight dispatch, $2. Yeah, hold on. Let me do three. Let me do three fifty. All right, let's do three fifty. We'll hit our pay rate. We're looking for, for good paying freight, right? All right, we'll hit our pay rate. Now, here's what we're looking for. We are looking for lows that are short. Right? I have a question. Yeah. Okay, once you uh, set up these drivers with uh, this dedicated loads, how do you get paid from it? How do you keep track of what they're doing? How do you get track of them? You got them dedicated. <laughs> There's no better way to keep track of what they're doing. You, once you put them on a dedicated, once you put them on a dedicated, you know they're you get paid automatically from per load, or how do they not? Yeah, they're picking up at the same place every day, drop off at the same place every day. Right? Right, but uh, how do you, uh, uh, how, do you how, how do you how do you avoid getting cut out of the deal? Okay, so they are under a dispatch agreement. Once they, once they establish a relationship with a shipper, how do you uh But you're under a dispatch agreement? You set them up on the you set them up on the runs, right? You right, but they're not but now they're going Okay, look, look. But they now they're going directly, they're going back and forth directly, they're not booking them anymore. But they're still but you don't want to set them up. They're still under your dispatch agreement. You understand? Your 
dispatch agreement is not just a one-time shot. If you set them up on a dedicated, that means that that dispatch agreement now applies to each and every time they pick that load up. Why? Because you're the one who's responsible for them getting that load. Right? Hello? Right. So when so when the broker sends the confirmation rate sheet, who is he sending it to? He still, even though it's a dedicated run, he still got to send a confirmation rate sheet. Right? Yes, so it's all about that confirmation rate sheet that just gets sent to you. Yeah, regardless, if he's if it's the same load every day, he still has to sign that confirmation rate sheet every time. Right? A BOL has to be presented every time he drops off the load, right? Right. All right. So if so, if you're the auto op business manager and everything is coming through you, right? So you're the one who's connected with the broker. You're the one who's sitting some of it. You're taking care of all his paperwork, right? Right. Okay. Now, okay. now if now if you're trying to say, well, how do I guarantee? You can't guarantee. You can't guarantee you're going to wake up tomorrow. You can't guarantee that you won't go to the kitchen and slip and fall and break your nose. You can't guarantee that you won't roll out of bed. Do you know that 900 plus people died this morning rolling out of bed? Think they had plans? Ain't no guarantees in life. But if you're going to let not having guarantees... Okay. I see what you're saying, Kevin. If you're gonna let this stop you from making money, then you need to find something else to do. Go work at Costco or something. So have a comfortable life. Because when it comes to making money, you gotta do things that are uncomfortable. Money is made in uncomfortable places. Money is not made in comfort zones. In order to be truly, truly successful, you gotta learn to operate outside of your comfort zone. You understand what I'm saying? Lee? Yeah, I have. Yeah, everybody takes a risk. That's them. There are risks in every type of business you run. If you were to start a grocery store, you run the risk of, of being shoplifted. If you, you know, if you, you know, no matter what you do, you, you, you run the risk. That's all part of being, being an entrepreneur and a business owner. Everybody can't do this. Everybody's not suited for this. That's why only 10% of the population is independently wealthy. Right? The question you have to ask yourself is, do I want to be part of that 10% or do I want to be part of the 90% who are doing something that's comfortable? Also, well, comfortable means you got to worry about how to pay your bills every day. Comfortable also means what? You don't get to live the type of lifestyle you see the 10% I'm living. You understand what I'm saying? Don't ever become comfortable. Always want to keep yourself outside of the comfort zone, but that always what drives you to do more, be even more, create more, create more, create more. Okay. Right. Yeah. I think I think he was just asking about about the point that 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 you got to about um about everything just being ran through you. So how could he like cut you out? I think yeah. that's that's what I. That's the whole nature of dispatching. You were. You are owner. That's why we don't refer to you all as dispatch. We refer to you all as owner op business managers. Remember? Exactly. All right. Yeah. Now, let's look at this here. Fitzgerald, Georgia. Uh, is this a short run? Yeah, short run. 116 miles. Right? It's paying $4.74 a mile and it's paying $550. It is going to where? Pembroke. Right? Give him that run, right? right? Let's do a reverse search. So he just made what? $550, right? Going 100 and what? What was that? 104 miles, 115 miles, whatever it was, right? Which means he can run down about what? How many hours How, how many hours is it going to take him to run that? 100, 115 miles. Oh, good. I think about what? About three hours? Three hours and a half? 
Talk to me, y'all. Three hours. All right. That's three hours and a half. He's on a what? 11 hour clock, right? Two and a half. He's on 11 hour clock, right? Right. right? All right. So when he gets right. there, so, so when he gets there, he's going to leave his truck in, in, in sleeping mode so he don't put off another his time while he's getting loaded. So he's going to pull out. It's going to take him three and a half hours to run that up to Pembroke. Right? When he gets to Pembroke, what is he going to do? Put his truck in sleeping mode while he's getting loaded, right? So he can get recaps right. a little bit later on. Right? These are things you got to know in order to be able to show a owner operator how he can do this. You got to know how you you got to know how to run a truck. Okay? This is what made me successful as an owner operator because I knew how to run a truck. You got to know how to run a truck. So, he gets a pin book, He's gonna put himself back in sleep, right? It's probably gonna take him about anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. I'm, I'm gonna load him. There's an hour to an hour and a half of what? Time he's gonna get back when he does his recaps, right? Right. So if he leaves at what's called, let's say he picks up at 6 a.m. But when he does from he gets to Pembroke. Take him three and a half hours, 6 a.m., and he leaves out of there at, at 6 a.m., all right? So then he got him loaded, and he leaves out of there at 6 a.m., all right? So from 6 a.m., what's three and a half hours later? 9.30, right? He rolls into Pembroke at 9.30. Right. He goes back into sleeper. It takes them 45 minutes to an hour to, to unload him, Right? So now he's pulling out there at about what 10 30, 10 45, right? Plenty of time left to go what? Find him another load. Right. So now he's looking for a load leaving out of Pembroke. He's not going back to the fish there and just find him a load leaving out of Pembroke. Right? Right. So he's looking for a load that's leaving somewhere around from, from Pembroke. Let's go back to Pembroke, Georgia. Go Pembroke. That Pembroke, Georgia, was it one of Pembroke, Florida? That was where Pembroke, Florida, he was going to. All right. All right. But it was it, but it's only like hundred and some miles. Well, that's Pembroke Pine. Let me go back. Back to my Georgia. Where Georgia, he was on we looking for one that leaving out of Pembroke. No, it, it was going to Pembroke. Take that back. Let me go back and find it. Kind of got me off track. <laughs> right, let me do 100 miles, 50 miles, or Blackbeard. That did. All right, search. All right. Oh, Georgia. That bed. Look for Georgia. All right. <clears throat> okay. Oh, so All right, here we go. Looking for that short run. Pin five, please. Wasn't it? Be rates. Yeah. All right. Be rates. I think it's the third one. I did it before. A lot of loads in Georgia, y'all. Yeah, I know a lot of loads I did in Georgia. 
but but I don't know. Oh, those bars must be a flute. Nah, it was on there. Hold on. Make sure I got my settings there. Save. All right. Settings will save. Might have been the fifth one. I, I know it was, it, it, it was a few months back. I mean, it was. Loading, loading, loading. All right, here we go. All right, he was picking up in fifth gym. All right. All right, so he's running up to Pembroke, Georgia. That was Pembroke, Georgia. I know it was Pembroke, Georgia. All right, so he's running to Pembroke, Georgia. All right, five hundred and fifty dollars, a hundred and sixteen miles. All right, so he gets he leaves there at six a.m. Let's say he's leaving there at six a.m. and he gets up to Pembroke. It's going to take him three hours and a half, okay, to make that run. He gets up to Pembroke. It's now nine thirty nine forty five. I just I just looked up the mileage in the minutes. Yeah, it's right here. One sixteen. Should be like only two, like less than two hours. Like, yeah, less yeah. than two hours. Yeah, but let's give him some time. But if, but if, it, but if, it's, if it was less than two hours, then they can go see what? More what? More time to run, right? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a reverse search from Pembroke, Georgia. All right, we're going to do a reverse search from Pembroke, Georgia. And we're not going to go back to fish jails, but we're going to just find him another load going out. And, and trailer size is going to be flat bed. We're going to do this. Thing. We're going to say within 50 miles. If we find something within 50 miles, but we don't want him to go that far. Okay. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, no, I don't want to find any closest uh, to me. <laughs> I don't want to find any closest to me. All right. <laughs> so uh, we got to search for a privilege or you going somewhere. All right. Boom. We're going to search for that one now. Now, he's already made what? Five, right? Right? Right. Yeah, plenty of time left on his clock, right? Right? I think you're right. All right. Now let's look. Well, he's find something that's closer to him. Pay rates. Quite a bit of long lows. Looking for something short. Matter of fact, it was for short mileage, short mileage, short mileage, short mileage. For short mileage. It'd be somebody. We have to go a little bit further out. But we got time. We got enough time to dig in to go pick up a load. We have to go out a little bit further. Let's increase this to do 100 miles. Here's one that's going from uh, it's 168 mile run. It's 94 miles out, and it's going 168 miles, and it's paying 7.35. That's four dollars and 38 cent per mile. All right, he got to do now. Does he have time to run that load, everybody? 
because we just found out that he checked the mileage. Yes. It takes about two and a half, two and a half hours to run that load to Pembroke, right? And let's say it took him an hour to get unloaded. So he left out about 10, 15, heading down towards where? Barnwell, right? Pick up a load, right? Down to four miles. Right. That takes him about what? Hour and a half? Two hour hours? Hour and a half? Two hours, right? Right, yeah. No, I, I want to make sure everybody agrees with me. Hour and a half to two hours. Let's say two hours. So he's only running 50 miles an hour instead of running 65 or 70, right? So it's 10, 11, right. 12. He gets to pick this load up at 12 o'clock, right? Right? Yes. All right. So he picks that load up. He pulls him there at 12 o'clock. Takes him 45 minutes to an hour to get him loaded. He gets loaded around about 1 o'clock. Remember, he went into what? Sleeper. So he's what? Going to get that back on his recap. Now he's looking at getting back about uh, three, almost four hours back on his recap. Right? Because he went, he went into Sleeper. Now, so he, he makes this run. How much money? On the last, we made 550 Now he's making what? 735 right? Might have added it up for me. What do we got? 550 to 735 a little over 1200 That's a little over 1200 His day ain't over yet. You done made $1,200 for the day already. Right? Yeah. All right. You got time to run another short load. Exactly. Now, let's look at this. Sure. Let's say we do a reverse search. So again, leaving out of where? Foreign no, leave it out of Seneca. Right? Right. I just leave it out of Seneca. Where did he leave from? He left from where? This Gerald, right? Right? Hello? Uh, he left from Fitzgerald. Well, that right? last round come out of Pembroke, no. but he originally left from. He left from Fitzgerald, is, is where he originally left from, right? That's whatever that first one was. Yeah, this girl. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where he left from. So now we're gonna try to bring him back on the way he started it. Because yeah. why what's the purpose of a just to find those around the circle, right? Right? Right, okay. So now he's trying to go to Fish Gerald Gordon. Yes, This is Gerald George. Right? So now we're trying to run him back to Fish Gerald George. Got a flat bed. Let's try to find ourselves within 50 miles of Seneca first. All right, we're good to go. Let's do a search. Hold up, let me get a little bit more. Let me get something within 50 miles of this Gerald. Yeah. Nothing there. Let's do 100 miles in this Gerald. All right. Now, you ain't got a whole bunch of stuff to choose from, but what you can do is this you can run him by 60 miles to this Gerald. Right, and that will put him uh, miles. How many miles from? Um, we can run him back to going to be the closest to Fitzgerald destination miles. They hit miles on destination. Where my destination miles? Destination. Alright, these are the ones that's showing prices. So what you want to do is, he's already made himself 1200 bucks, right? So all you got to do now is, because everything else you need is just going to be added on to, on to his money. 
Let's say if he grabbed one of these right here, let's say he grabbed this one, one 500, 10, 500 bucks. He's got a dead head 60 miles, right? Trip is going to be 205 miles. It's going to make him about, what, four and a half to five hours. Does he have time to run that trip? Anybody? Yeah, he should, because he got, yes. what, three, four hours recap? Exactly. And he, he, without his recap, he still got about six hours. He, he's got just over five hours, right? Yeah. So he's got time. Yeah, to, have plenty of time to run that. So he's got time to run that. I'm not that one. He can run this one. It's 149 miles. Either 480 or 500. He's already made, what, 1,200? 1250? 1250 plus 500 is what? Yeah. 1250 plus 500 is what? 1750. Now, you mean to tell me, now you mean to tell me 1750 a day, that ain't good money? That's, That's a heavy drive in the driver. Huh? Let's see. That's not good money. a happy driver in the driver's seat. Look, I don't care how you look at it. That's great money. Good and, good money. And let's look at this. Now, if he was to try to run a load from wherever he was going to wherever he was going, to, he tried to run a 1,200-mile a run, and he wants to make, you know, say, let's say if he bought a run that pays him 1,200 miles and it's paid him uh, 3,800 bucks, you think that would be better than this? No. No, because fuel, fuel is going to eat that up. Because look, the truck only gets 5.56 miles to the gallon. That's what a truck gets. Okay, These are things you're going to have to know. The truck is only getting 5.56 miles per gallon. Okay, Top speed, 65 miles an hour. The average driver a good driver is only going to be able to drive 650 miles in one driving shift. Most drivers going to run 500, maybe 550. But a good driver can run 650 miles in one driving shift. So on a 1,200-mile run, how many days is it going to take him to complete that run? He's a great driver. He mm -hmm. runs, let's say, 600 miles. he got to run 600 miles in. That's two full days, right? Right? Wow. All right, so that's two full days. So if he was to run, how many of those runs can he run each week? I'm, he's got to shut down. No more than, what, three? Yeah, about two and a half. Yeah, two, really. So, I mean, really, he's only going to run two of them. And three pushing it. Exactly. So, yeah, so he's only going to run two of those. So he's going to make what? 3,800 bucks. What, what, what's that pay him? That, that's 3,800 times two, right? 3,800 times two. Right. That gives him 7,600 bucks, right? Now, let's check his, let's check his fuel um, consumption. 5.56 miles to the gallon. He's running 1,200 miles, right? So, you get 5.56 miles to the gallon, so you got, what, 1,200? 1,200 divided by 5.56. Yeah, that's 215 miles, right? What's fuel run, y'all? About what, 273, 275, 289, right? Right? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. All right. So you got 215, 250 gallons times 2 point, let's say 7, 8, 597 dollars on fuel just for that one trip. All about that times 2 because you might have went too low that week, right? Yeah. Well, his fuel consumption is eleven $1 hundred ninety-five dollars, right? So that's eleven $1 hundred ninety-five dollars you gotta take from what? That what? what you looking at? That seventy-six hundred, right? So seventy-six hundred. So seventy-six hundred 
minus eleven ninety five. That's 64, that's 64 bucks, right? Now, let's do that versus the short run. The short run, he's made what, $1,700 a day, right now? $1,750, right? $1,750. Yeah. You call those books, hey, I got that same load every day about the same time. All three of them. He said, okay, great. Let, 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 take them off my book. That's five days a week. Eight thousand seven hundred fifty, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's check the fuel out. Why? Cause he, he cause remember, <laughs> let's fuel him out. <laughs> exactly. Let's check the fuel out. Cause remember, he only ran what? The first run was what? Um, the first run was uh one sixteen. The next one was this Jerry Pembroke. The next one was. Uh, 94, and the last one was 94. Yeah, the next one that was one 116 plus 94 plus 60. About 250, 114, something like that. So, so how many miles is that, y'all? We got. I don't know. You took the calendar down. Hold on. Let me calculate it down. We got one. 16 plus 94 plus 60. That's 270 miles. Right? 270? How much fuel are you going to burn? Hardly any. Right? 5.5 5 or 270 divided by 5.56, right? Two seventy divided by five point five six. He needs forty eight gallons. <laughs> Make that run, right? Forty eight gallons times what? Two point seven eight. That's what it costs on fuel. All he needs is one hundred thirty five dollars times five days a week, right? Six hundred seventy-five dollars on fuel versus the what? Versus what? Eleven hundred somebody dollars on fuel, right? Right. Yeah, I mean. So you tell me what's better now? Him running all over the country, you know, <laughs> pushing it, pushing it, because he's trying to make them long runs, right? And spending eleven hundred and seventy-five dollars on fuel. Versus him making short runs, being back at the same place he started at every night, sleeping in a bed um, somewhere instead of sleeping in a truck, right? Right? And off on the weekend. Instead of spending his weekend way out away from home, so chances are if he's running them long runs, every other weekend he's going to be spending it somewhere else, right? I'm human. Yeah. Look. I, I done dealt with guys who have been in the business for 30 years. They swear up and down. Ah, uh, nah, I make mean, more money in the long run. No, you don't. No, you don't. I've been able to sit down and show them and take them and convince them to, to look at me. I know you think you know what you're doing, but you were taught by somebody who learned it wrong. So that all that, all that means is you've been doing it wrong for 30 some years. That's all that means. I mean, when I hear somebody say, I've been doing this long, I don't mean that to me. All that means to me is you just been doing it wrong for that long time. So someone else showed you how to do it wrong. That's all that means. Okay. Now, if you hush up just for a second, not only can I increase your money, but I can give you more quality time. More quality time. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, because here's what I like about numbers. You can't make them lie. One plus one is going to always be two. You never going to make two plus two be nine. Always going to be four. Okay, how you look at it. You twist it, turn it, you shape it. 
run it backwards, run it forwards, it's still going to be the same thing. You can't make it lie. Okay? So what you all need to start, what you all got to start doing is you got to learn how to take these owner operators and you got to learn how to sit them down and show them a better way of running. That's going to give them a better quality of life. Give them more home time. More money in their pocket. Less stress on their truck. And they're spending less money on their truck. Is that again? Mr. Butler, what they say about uh, men lie, women lie? What they say about what? Men? But numbers don't lie. <laughs> yeah, numbers don't lie. Men lie. Yeah, but numbers don't lie. <laughs> okay. That's right. Numbers don't lie. <laughs> look, 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 look. Once you get used to doing this, I mean, but but there's certain things you gotta know. Um, you gotta know, you know, on uh, what a truck I would do on the fuel, five point five six miles a gallon. You gotta know what the average person um can drive. Because most guys do they want to stop it. They take a piss every two hours, so they ain't gonna be able to run those 650 miles you know, on the driving ship. They're gonna be they're gonna run more like 450, 500 miles. Now, we took the best case uh, scenario. If you can find loads that's running 1,200 miles, that's paying you what, 3,800 bucks. Chances are you're gonna find loads that's paying for 1,200 miles, that's paying you what, more like 2,400 bucks or 2,200 bucks, right? Right? Does anybody disagree with me? Yes. All right. Chances are your driver's not going to be able to run 600 and 50 miles of the driving ship. Chances are he's going to run at tops 500, maybe 450. So it's going to take him what? Two days and a half to make that run instead of two days. So he's all going to be able to run no more than two of them runs each week. Nowhere near three. He might not be able to run two. Might be able to run one and then run the other one, then you gotta wait till Monday to the little on that one. So that's how it usually works out. So he ain't making nowhere near that what? That seven thousand dollars. Plus he's gonna spend eleven hundred and seventy five dollars on fuel. That's a given. Y'all see how short runs always Always are gonna give your drivers more money if you know how to interconnect them. Now we just did this just off a random you know, just looking in Georgia. You can do this in every state. You can do this in every single state, but you gotta know how to find those loads and you gotta know how to interconnect them. Okay, this is not theory. We just showed y'all exactly how this is done. And we use real loads. Real mileage, real numbers. Okay. Once you get to the point where you have, when you're able to have control and where you can take a driver and you sit them down and you say, look, 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 look. My job is to help you to run better, more efficiently, and to help you make more money. Because I want to give you more home time. I want to give you more downtime. And I want to give you more money. Now, I can't do that with you running these long, long, long runs. I can do it on short runs. Yeah, but short runs don't pay them. No, short runs pay more money. No, they don't. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Why? Because you can run more up there. And you can be home every night and sleep in a nice, comfortable bed. Or you can be, you can shut down um, every night and have some type of, you know, real life outside of your truck. You be off every weekend and bring it home almost $7,000 a week. Every week. Versus bring it home really about $3,500. But that's what it's going to be more like because driving ain't going to be able to run those 650 miles consistently, not most of them. They ain't going to be able to do it. And the load's not going to be in on those long runs like that, 1,200 miles, you ain't gonna find no loads that's paying the 3,800 consistently. It's gonna be more like 2,200. That's gonna cut his money way down from, from that seven something to almost what? Oh, something. Y'all see what I'm saying? 
And if he spent eleven hundred dollars on fuel, that's gonna cut it down to three something. I'll take home, maybe even less than three. But if he's running them short runs, he pretty much guarantee himself almost seven grand going home every week. And he's off every weekend. Able to sleep in a nice bed every night. Put a whole lot less stress on his truck. So he ain't got to worry about tiring, being worn out, spending, you know, almost 900 bucks a tire how to get a replace. You're a lot happier. Why? Because you got them on the, you got them on a dedicated run. Right? You you created a dedicated run for him. So now once you have automated his thing, you can convince him now to do what? Automate your thing. He you get his money, you get your money, like clockwork. Now you can go back out and find your other driver and do the same thing with it. You just keep doing that. You keep creating these dedicated runs for these for these drivers. Next thing you know, you look like six months, eight months from now, you got yourself 120 drivers that you're managing that you really don't have to manage. Does everybody understand how you how you effectively build your book of business and you make it to where it's actually manageable for your team without them having to do a whole bunch of work and create a, and create a lot of chaos? Do y'all understand that? Yeah. Okay. Look, I'll tell y'all something. I know a little bit about what I'm doing. I do. I, I know a little bit about what I'm doing. If you all would just, just you know, <laughs> be like the new people. You know, don't know enough not to listen to me. <laughs> okay? You know, if, if you stop, you know, fighting me with what you think you already know, and just drop what you think you know and just do exactly what I show you all to do. I guarantee you won't. You can't do this. You can't help me. You can't help me. You will. You will. Okay. Now, if you want to be a little If you need to, but if you just do it, I promise you, you'll make money. All you gotta do is just do it. I'm showing it to you. I didn't make this stuff up. Did I make these numbers up? Did I make these loads up? No. I didn't this stuff up. This is a live load board. These are live loads. These are real time numbers going to real places. Okay. So, you know, uh, let's stay focused. You know, we get all the noise. I know there's a lot of noise out there. You got to stay focused. And you got to, and, 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 I mean, you really got to get to the point to where you got this down pat. And, and the only way you're going to do that is you got to just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over, and over again. You got to do it the right way every time. So you practice something wrong, you're going to learn it wrong, right? You practice something right, you're going to learn it right. So we just put the rest of that theory about long loads versus short loads. Okay, short loads are always going to pay you more money. Short loads are always going to give you more home time. Short loads are always going to put less stress on your truck. Short loads are always going to cost you less in fuel consumption. Short loads are going to always be better. All right, on that note, we're going to call it. Um, it is getting kind of late for me, so we're going to call it. It's already 10-10. All right, I hope y'all um, got something out of it. a nice training. I hope, hope you all got the questions. Um, from some of the questions answered from last night. Tomorrow night will be all Q&A. So uh, make sure you all jot down your your questions and have them ready uh, for, for tomorrow night because it's going to be all Q&A. Uh, we're not going to be on here very long. Do about an hour, maybe an hour, 20 minutes. And that's going to be it. Be real fast. It's gonna be on point. I want y'all to just come with the questions so I can just come with the answers. All right. All right, everybody. I appreciate you all. I will see you all back here on tomorrow night at 8 p.m.
And after that, I see y'all on Saturday, hopefully. Um, wife and I both be going to Atlanta sometime or another. I'm not sure if it's this weekend or next week. But um, if we do, I'll see if I can take my tablet with me and make, make, make a little broadcast. Um, so we mostly we gotta uh, go take care of some stuff. Her cousin, you know, with her brother. So I'll um, probably be out of town for a while. But do what you're doing. Just, you know, stay focused. You know, don't, you know, get off them hot shots. <laughs> I'm sorry, get off them spin of man, the box the hot shots. Just, you know, they're just dragging you down. They're holding you back. So, uh, you know, not trying to be mean to them, but, you know, this is business. This is business. Okay? You all are here to make money. Uh, you're not here to babysit. You're not here to coach. You to, you know, hug. And, oh, it's going to be all right, Mr. Hot Shot Driver. You know, uh, I ain't got time for that. All right? All right, everybody. Appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good night. All right, see. Good night, Mr. Butler. Good night, good night, good night. <laughs>